Tonight, the league table is finalized and we find out which four players are guaranteed a seat at the final, which four go on to play in the heads up stage and which four are headed home. This is the Party Poker Premier League Season 7. The lineup this year is definitely the toughest lineup that there's ever been. Fantastic players, top to bottom. I don't think there's any easy lineup in the Premier League. I mean, everyone thinks they're the best. It's definitely a unique structure. It's unlike any other form of poker. You only have to beat 11 other degenerates. It's about winning as many points as possible. There's a lot of money on the table. It really is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I enjoy the challenge. I'm ready for that. This season, the Premier League has made its second visit to the west side of the Atlantic, and the players have gathered at the Playground Poker Club. This unique event sees the best of the best play a league format. They each play four heats in a bid to accumulate points in order to progress through to the final table. As always with the Premier League, we've seen some fantastic poker and our players have really been put to the test. Jesse May is here to give us a roundup of the action so far. Last time, Espandiari, Seaver, Selk and Shaq all started the heat, needing big results. Former champion Seaver put his Premier League on the line and doubled up against Shaq. That was a bad turn for me. Don't worry, I haven't won a single all in all from the other league. You knew that. Wow. There was huge disappointment for Vanessa so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Am I upset? Yes, I'm upset. I ran like crap the entire Premier League. What do you want? I mean, like, I didn't play that well. I don't know. What you, I mean, you want like a. Like, what do you. Like, your man just. Yes, this sucks. This is confirmation of the league standings after Vanessa Self's knockout and elimination. The highlighted players are all still at the table. Three more of them will be sent to the rail for good. Phil Locke is in big danger of being one of those three and needs the likes of Duhamel and Esfandiari to leave the table very soon. At the top, Jeff Gross can relax as he has already secured his place. You can just say if it's a wash. So win. looking at the chip, kidding? Scott Seaver, who is one of the players who desperately yeah, needs a big result, is currently blood, top of the pile with no, a big not, lead from Sorrel Mizzy it. in There's second place. You check, so we're looking at whole I'm joined out. by whoa, Jason Kuhn and whoa, Phil. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't know it's it's fascinating to see I mean, how each player has adapted to needing to execute different strategies. There's so many people who want Duhamel to bust next. Brian Rast, for instance, he's handcuffed by Duhamel. Jess Fandiari is handcuffed by Duhamel. Oh, that could very well be it. He's keeping Duhamel alive so that they have to wait more, him out. I'm just curious. I just thought we, I'm not like, that could be it. Yeah, so we can get chips from other guys, let Duhamel keep the beat. He's discounting the whole, I could actually get fourth. I don't think he could. There's more game than them playing conservatively. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's 100% it. We have cracked it. Sievert made mathematically pure decisions. He is trying to leak chips. so good. He's so good. He's so smart. <laughs> He's going to keep those guys in the coffin, keep Duhamel alive, and just chip away at everybody else. Which is terrible for me because as a guy who needs Duhamel to go out next, it's never happening when a couple of people know it. Yep. Check. It's just never happening. Check. Okay, well, that's a super binger for Mizzy. Mizzy loves his hand. He lo he he was okay with it before, but now he loves it. Yeah, he's going to get called, too, when he leads. It's kind of a funny hand. If, if you're beat by a higher queen, you can save yourself with a spade. If you're beat by a flush draw, you have the queen 000. to beat the guy's draw. So it's a warbly, hey, I'm ahead of both sides of the coin. It and plays, if I'm not, it I plays great as a bluff catcher too. You yeah. lead the turn and then check call the river and never lose a big right, pot. Right, and get the value. Yeah, yeah get the value get the from the ace jack with the jack of spades five. or something like yeah. that. All right, if he had checked, was Duomo going to bet the turn? 
Uh, no, I think he would just try to show the hand down win. Yeah, we're in 13 oh, right now. Yeah. Sorrel Mizzy also feels like a guy to me who's just, he keeps looking at the sheet and they say, you know what, just play poker. I'll play yeah. poker. That's what's got me here. I'm not what? really sure. Oh. <laughs> we're doing next century. <laughs> One thing they will all know is that Scott Seaver's not going to do anything wrong right now. No. So, like, they're all in his world right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. He's the guy that's just going to come in here prepared. Like, like we thought we had everything pegged, and oh. then you see some weird stuff going on. And, you know, take five minutes, oh. we realize, hey, this is what he's doing. I guarantee you nobody else picked up on that. Oh. All right. Because it's not going to showdown, you know. Right, and they're not, not seeing Jack the hands. Hot. If they could right. see the hands, yeah. they would know exactly what he's thinking. Yep. And they could adjust and punish and get some, but they don't see it. We're seeing it. Yep. So interesting. Wow. 18,000. Can he do it again? This is different. Miz well, has been I, playing I think, wider. I think this is Jeff Gross dependent. Oh, he's, it's he's Jeff Gross on, on the big all line. Oh, here he is. Hold. Yeah, he's going to be all in here against the cutoff open. Yeah, especially against Miz, who's not playing as tight as someone. Yeah, he's going to take that one Hold. down. Yep. Posturing. Yeah, Hollywood. absolutely never calling Ace Deuce off. Take him in the shins. <laughs> Gosh, there, there can't be. There can't be a reason to call. Nah, nah, he's just making Antonio sweat it a little bit. Doesn't feel like you're happy with one point. As he slurps his hot cocoa. He said it doesn't feel like you're happy with a point, Antonio. It's actually, it's a, I think it's impossible for Antonio to make the final eight if he goes out in seventh position. I yeah. think it's impossible. I think Antonio has been playing very well today. Well... He hasn't had much to work with, but I think he's been on the, you know, I didn't, didn't know he had discipline in him. And today he's been playing very disciplined. Such a good album. 21, 16. Yeah, what's the... Uh... 21, yep. He does have all the gears, right? I think he had to lose that king six versus king queen hand against self to find the discipline button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like a spot where, even to his credit, uh, he doesn't lose a pile of his. He doesn't lose right. a ton of his Sorry, pile of doubles. And, and also, once he when he's additionally handcuffed by a, a shorter stack, his patience can be shown a lot easier. Absolutely. Twenty one thirty. 17,000. Anytime Seaver picks up a big hand, potential Fold. for him to stack someone. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if we can get a sweat here. Fold. 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 <laughs> wow. The What did you say when I was in the sweat box? You said, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be happy with one. This one's so tough when you know a guy's opening everything. Yeah, and you only have one person behind you as well. This is a really, really sick spot. Yeah. Kind of, Jeff kind has played these like spots tighter somebody. than anybody no, in the yeah, tournament. Yeah. One hand I played in the last 30 hands. You know? I, I think you, keep I it think up, okay? I mean, I kind of keep it up. You know, I'm really just getting out of line. I don't think it's a bad shove. It doesn't feel like a terrible shove, does it? Yeah, I don't. I think he's going to fold. Really? Yep, I'll bet you 500 he folds. I'm going to make a bet. Okay, the, the thing feeling. is, he's just so good at laddering up. He's like, I'm just going to go with the I'm math almost, ladder. I'm almost he's just uh, taking the math ladder. But in the blind, he's having so off. much no bet. fold no equity. Bet. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was about to snap you. I was like, you still want for that? I saw it in his eyes. I saw yesterday. That he's going to fold? No, he's going to shove. Like, you're the king of misinformation. Feels like, like he wants to shove. No, he's going to ship it. For you yeah, to say that's that, why I got out of this bet. You probably yeah, were Unless you had the best hand. He's getting that, I should just do it. It's the right play. He's going to fold everything anyway. Yeah. A number. He's, but that smile, yeah, was, but he knows it doesn't. I might, I might uh, take you off here. He knows it. I tell my so number. So far, he's just been so consistent. No, say, fold say everything from you all the time. Fold exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad I got out of that bet. Yeah. In the end, it's just. He's getting snapped. I want to take the snap. How much is that? You guys are just independent. Like 220, yeah. I wonder because. Gross is one of the people who Seaver doesn't mind seeing do well, but it, it's too oh, wow. strong. Trying to pick that up chips is right. too important. You guys are not good at challenge five or something. <laughs> it's just too important. Yeah. It's just too big. Of day, Seaver needs chips. He needs right. to win yeah. this thing. I actually thought it's funny because that was the closest, J, the hardest one JG had. And it's only because he knows Seaver's opening like 100% or close to it, 90%. Like, and poor JG's getting inadvertently slow rolled here. Got my Premier League record in Jeopardy, Scott. Top two every heat, you know. It's kind of. I know, I know. 
I'm sure there is a decision. I wonder <laughs> how clear it is. Yep. I wonder it was, how okay, clear so it is there. for Scott. If it was Duhama with those ace jack, maybe he would fold his ace king, let him have the chips, you know? Four He's doing yeah. the points. He's yeah. just seeing, okay, I know I get these points. Two, I know four, I'm a favorite. But eight K. He's structured yeah. so carefully where yeah, he I wants call. the chips call. to come from. Okay, oh, wow. he made a he decided to call. Uh, he was trying to make the case for a fold. There's yeah. probably a I've case to be made, but not that nearly as strong as yeah, the case I think to that's, call. That's exactly what he was thinking about. Not yeah. how much heck would he yeah, have against you could Jeff. Win. No, yeah, it was never in his mind. <laughs> he was so, and, uh, he's like, could it be a mistake to call with this? You want me to win? You know, that's why I deviate from my strategy, and I need a J for Jeff. Nope. Get the backdoor diamonds. Can't yeah, count yeah, out Jeff Gross right. this Premier yeah, League. I'll tell Montreal. you that. Montreal. Montreal does so good in Montreal. Even a ten of diamonds would yeah. be cool. Cards right. are set no matter what you root for. They are what they are. It's not a good card. There are no split it's pots. Jack for Jeff. Jeff for Jeff is bounce. F for Jeff. J. Oh. Ooh. Game Game brother, nice plays, and for Jeff See you guys. Gross, he'll take the 1.37. Uh oh, Miz, now I get to, I get a sweat. Wow, it's such a fish. Yeah. 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 Chip leader at the final <sighs> table as he breaks the What a good spot. Coleman mm, can't and, uh, do anything. I had to see him. Just wait for Duhamel the right there. You just got to pay two more people now. Yeah, I just, now I have a pretty good spot here. Rask gets doubled up. I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble. No. You have a strategy that got you top two every time. Yeah, I know. first deviation. Yeah, I know. But. Good luck. And T2000, please. Just don't win, Miz, but do whatever else well, you, you gotta do. Seaver is now over a million chips, and the man currently in the elimination zone on the league table looks like he will progress through to the heads up stage. The two players at the bottom of the league standing have the fewest chips. They really have a lot of work to do to have any chance of progressing through to the next stage of the tournament. I'm a little bummed that, you know, obviously seventh, not what I wanted, but I knew I had to get seventh. That was like the minimum today. I was just going to play tight until that and didn't go my way, but I'm, uh, I still think I'll be first tomorrow in the um, final table and either way I'll be first or second and I'll, I'll be ready to go. So I'm very excited. Are you going to stick around and kind of watch how this heat oh, plays yeah. out? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd pay money to stay around. I love being able to watch the, you know, in the booth and hang out. It's awesome. I definitely stay around see what, uh, see what transpires and uh, I have to sweat against Mizzy now. I yeah. mean, I, I think I'm in pretty, I probably like 70 something percent cause he still has to win. So Scott has a lot of chips and he's going to be kind of tight. So, uh, I just, I hope he doesn't get heads up cause then I'll be a real sweat, but, uh, I like my chances to be first going tomorrow. Well, we will see you at the final table. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Surprised he shoved that because he should, well, I guess he doesn't So still a lot to play for. Obviously, yeah. Scott Seaver looking more and more like a guy who's going to be in the heads up. Like loose, but well, he didn't Jonathan Duhamel yeah. as well. Well, well. Antonio's got a rocky crazy. road, and it looks like it, Brian Rask is now guaranteed to be in there. Well, and that's, that's so exactly big. so he's realized that this guy understands. And oh, wow. what's no. so sick is I think if I wow. look down two aces, I can't call you. That's what's the sickest thing. So I, That's I, such I a big shove of ace six off. You wanted to call there, huh? Good. Yeah, I mean, I understand why Folk. John folded, though, well, because Rass definitely should not be open shoving that no. many big blinds well, with ace six no, off. But he's got nothing to lose. John, yeah, but I mean, just yeah, specifically chips-wise, you're losing yeah, money shoving there. It's a minus EV thing with it. It's yeah, just, I, you I can't mean, overcome like, the math. So if yeah, he's, he he's, he's near the same stack size as Shaq and, and Antonio, so I just don't see the point of chipping in a hand that's losing you money. Which is pretty uh, likely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shoving queen nine so suited is a better shove than shoving a six off ball. for 22 big blinds. There. And in your yep, mind, that's the uh, there's so many short stacks out there that Brian mm -hmm. Rask can get third another way. Yeah, I mean, there's just it's just an unnecessary risk with your stack size. I would understand if if you had like. 12 bigs or something, 18, but he's still got a lot of room. So Duhamel gets a real hand here. Two jacks. I mean, I'm supposed to shove any two cards here against you. Just not these Then you should pull. I just can't. <laughs> and even though Dan's doing fine. Yeah. I think even though Duhamel knows he can't go out next because it's really bad for him, he's going to go with this. It's just like. It's a very strong hand. It's a tough one to. Well, is Mizzy going to mess around here? The question is how bad it is it for Duhamel to go out next? It's. It's pretty bad, but it's, um, <laughs> what is Mizzy this? Mizzy just loves that button three bet. Raised to 40,000. Wow, and this is actually going to create. Wow. Let's see what goes wow. on. Wow. 
Antonio. Um, Brian fold. Rask gets wow. to instantly fold Ace so, Jack, so, which he might have. Just so, so, so I'm running so bad. <laughs> That's I'm amazing because so if bad. Missy just plays an honest game, yeah, there, and folds Rask reshoves, Rask, and then we have him all in Jack yeah. to Ace Jack for yeah. me to lock up ahead. So up. Mizzy That's thinks insane. that Duhamel is scared <laughs> like, to go so out much. next. What does Duhamel think about he's that? He's thinking I don't give a beep, and he's gonna go all in. That's what I think too. Yeah. All in. I'm Duhamel! Wow. How did Rass get? Rass is the luckiest. Rass is running so good. <laughs> he has no idea how good he ran yeah. there. Oh my god. Is he and I'm home? running so bad. That is so Four. sick. Very well done. I was fooling to you, that's for sure. What? I was fooling to you, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> really, huh? Uh, I'm not scared, Sorrel. <sighs> it's crunch time for some of our Premier League players. It's all about points and figuring out what they need to do to avoid elimination. Action continues after the break. Welcome back to the Playground Poker Club in Montreal, where Season 7 of the Party Poker Premier League is reaching the end of the league stages. We now have six players left in this last heat. Before the break, Jeff Gross was eliminated, but despite just getting one point, he is still guaranteed a final table spot. Let's get back to the action to find out who will join him there. Get on in so there. With, with no change, change. No, as King it ten, goes out according to chip count right now, I believe. Nah, I'm lying. King, King, Jeff, King ten Dan, of hearts on them. Sorrel and Jason in the King ten offsuits, four. like that's and pretty ballsy. King ten of hearts on them. Man, I'm Rast. Oh. I need you gone, kid. Do. Oh. Do Hamel and Siever. I Siever need you gone. In the oh. um, yeah. in the heads up, and Antonio is currently the in ball. an elimination position along with Shaq. Oh, eight thousand. Yeah. So I guess you could look at it in a kind of way where Shaq and Antonio need to make something happen or at least Check. outlast someone else at the table. Heads up. Check. Well, Miz 25,000. Good hand. Yeah, it's just going to go check call. Um, I think there's a chance that Seaver bets two streets for value and then checks back forever. 25,000. Just assuming that, yep. uh, yeah, just assuming uh, that no Call draw 25. card gets there on the turn. Like if a king especially rolls off, I think Seaver will keep value betting and then just check back the river. Yeah, like that's a card that I think Scott, it, it's close between a check back, check. but he can protect check. against worse sixes, worse threes and draws. Okay, so now Scott will probably fold to a river bet, um, but a lot of bricks, Scott would just snap call, uh, knowing they'll miss. But now since 4-5 at least made a pair and tried to show down, 5-7 made a straight, uh, even like a uh, hand like deuce 5, maybe would check call one, deuce 5 of clubs or something like that. Uh, so I think Scott will just find a fold. The only thing that missed completely is hearts. Miz trying to size this out. Yeah, he might just choose like a strange bet size, which would be fine if he bet like 120,000 since Scott never has any better than one pair. 100,000. Yeah, oh. so he just chooses an over bet. All right, I, I mean, it makes total sense. One and one. The only thing that now, the bet doesn't oh, make yeah. complete yeah. sense well, is this, so just Sorrel just one doesn't one. have all that many bluffs in his range by the river. So maybe like a slightly smaller bet would make more sense. Well, sometimes 21, 25. That's the nerd coming out in a minute. 21, 30. We like it. We like it. Yeah. 21, 31. 21. Sorrel Mitzi has really cemented himself as a mainstay at the top of the tournament world for the past five plus years. He is very tough, very good player, and he's had a couple good results recently. I love the banter so much. He, he knocked me out of a big tournament once before, but I have a little revenge to get on him. Shaq attack. He's a sweetheart. He is probably the most huggable person in poker. I gotta be ready to hug you. He's also a very good poker player. I got nothing but love for the Miz. I'm a sicko, I need a sweat, even if it's against me. He's also very charming most of the time, but he can also be like kind of annoying and like, uh, a little bit conceited occasionally. Ooh, I call oh, that. I knew that he can make some big calls. Not really the kind of guy who you want to run big bluffs on. He's also, you know, someone that just naturally has a much tighter style than a lot of other people. So I think that's going to suit him really well in this format. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, make a deep run out of it. 39. 
The live reap think thinking is when you know your opponent likes your hand, bet 40. more. It's just like, if, and when you know they're sticky and you're bluffing, bet less. That just like saves you a little money over there. And you should always ask yourself the question, if I go all in, he can never call. Can he, can he ever call? Unless if I go all in, can he call? Well, yeah, Phil asked himself that yesterday. Phil asked and if you get the answer right, double basis. check your math. Yeah, if you get the answer right, double check your math. time? 2180. That's always the last question you ask yourself before making a bet in a no limit situation. All in? If I go all in, can he call? <laughs> Oh. Under. Look at the position it's these all ins give the small under. pairs. It's just so annoying. Yeah, so decision fold. time, decision time for Dan Shack. Is it what quality of decision do you feel like he should? Uh -oh. he has here? I think he should say my hand significantly oh, behind what this guy should be shoving for this many chips. I fold. Yeah. He'd won. Um, and if he's shoving, what happens if I act like I'm going to race tonight? Yeah, I mean, this would just be even though we know Rass is shoving wider than what he should be. Dan doesn't know that. That would seem fair. Either way. Yeah, just, okay. You want to be the last order. aggressor. If you call, you're just calling. One hand with rest. He, doesn't, he, he, does, it went, he just doesn't dominate anything so other than like deuces, like threes, and fours. And I don't think Rast mm -hmm. even shut. Well, should shut those. If he had I eights, I, I would be fine with him going all in since he beats all the pairs under that. I can't. I can't catch either one of them because they'll get. He, Rask gets. I don't think you guys should can discuss this. <laughs> oh, we can't. I mean, no, not, not in mid hand. Not uh, okay, then I fold. Now we'll discuss oh. it. I fold. I fold oh, because if, they, if the I bust Rask, then they're getting. Antonio pointed out that you, during the hand you can't have strategy conversations. <laughs> we get relaxed <laughs> here and there, but well, exactly. I think that was a fair. Yeah, that was a fair. Yeah, it was on. All right, so are you going under or over? What is it? Twenty one eighty. Pocket five. Yeah. Well, it's on you Antonio. You see a guy like Dan Coleman come in and just kind of fold how the lines give it. What? And now, 2180? Like, yeah. Why yeah. sitting here watching? There's yeah. just a lot of You went under, right? Shut yeah. mistakes. Yeah, big, okay. Big, big, big shut mistakes. Now, one more action. You know that was a bluff. You guys had fucking. Seat one has a penalty, a two hand penalty for folding out of okay. turn. Wow. Close to folding. First you. It's a pretty good deal. Damn it. Thank you. Right now, it looks like sweet bluff. revenge for Seaver. I like that he's doing it. Not that let's not far away time. from the whole time I think, man, I wanted to buy 40 years I just ago. really wanted to grab like 150 years from now. <laughs> and I felt that did it. I was just ready to buy. And wow. Well, 16, I mean, it's always There's a good a big time hand. to pick and up aces if you're Seaver. <clears throat> that was too oh, Good game, Dan Check. Oh, Dan, it's video, been yeah. nice having you at well, this Premier League. Well, 18% of the time. Fold. He's going to get there. Call. Fold and call. Jesus. Oh, I had a real hand. Too. Yeah, this is a bit of an unlucky spot I'm, for yeah. Dan Shack. I'm obviously, I love You're Scott, but I'm rooting for 10. I want nice. Dan to outlive Raz. Actually. Who else is rooting I, for Dan Shack in this one? I have to. I, I, need, to to I, I, I need Antonio to go up first. Therefore, yeah. I have to have a 10 here to I, survive. I think Jeff yeah. Gross might be a Shack fan in this spot. Well, we've got some backdoor sweats. Nine or seven. This is what thin, is, a thin 12%. Oh, He's, he doesn't have the JG Montreal thing going on. He's just a regular man. Ooh, that doesn't do anything. <laughs> He's down to his just the two outs that it felt like he had. Well, this, this he is the defending champion in this though. Premier League. Yeah, but yeah, for Dan good. Shack, he is not yeah, going to make yeah. the final eight. Yeah. Elimination. Luck, His multiple eliminations. It's Shaq and it's Phil. It's boom. Things happen out there with that elimination. Yeah. <laughs> Shaq will Something good's going to happen here. Ten points. All right, yeah, so we'll just pass. That's a smile for Seaver. All the players left I can confirm that. I'm punished for asking. And Phil Locke, I think. I'm out. I did the math. You're guaranteed one. Premier League. There's no doubt about it. Let's take a look at the chips on the table. Seaver has now increased his lead. He almost has half the chips in play and looks set to progress through to the heads up stage. But with five players left, anything could happen in this last league match. However, with that last knockout, we do bid farewell to Dan Shack. We've lost Dan Shack from this heat and unfortunately from the Premier League as well for the rest of the season. It seemed like you just ran incredibly poorly. There are a few players this season that just couldn't seem to catch a break. How do you push past that the next time that you're playing poker? Oh, it's part of the game. I mean, you run well for a while and then sometimes you just don't. Um, I made a couple mistakes also, so I wouldn't just uh, blame it on running bad. I mean, I think I played well today. I just ran two bad hands into Scott Seaver and there's nothing really I could do about it. Um, 
but I love the Premier League and I have good memories from last time and everyone's great here and I love being here so you know you, as a poker player you know you're not going to win every time you play so you know you have to roll with these things and um, wait till it turns around. We're sad to say goodbye to our defending champion Dan Shack. Next season we'll see you again. This is confirmation of the league standings after Dan Shack's knockout, with all the highlighted players still at the table and guaranteed at least five points. Those now eliminated include Dan Shack, Vanessa Self, and Phil Locke. One more player will also be sent to the rail for good. Those still in danger are Scott Seaver, Antonio Esfandiari, Jonathan Duhamel, and Jungleman, who is already in the clubhouse on 24 points. For the rest, at least, a playoff place is guaranteed at this stage. We're down to five here at the Party Poker Premier League as Dan Shack busted out with just three points. And unfortunately, we have to bid farewell to last year's champion as he now can't win enough points to qualify for the next stage of the tournament. Let's head back to the action. So if they add that matches, they won't start with the same one. Yeah, everyone starts with like the, the same four, the four, five, So five, seven, the eight cards eight. are back yeah. in the air so here different the Playground finish. Poker Club. Well, I don't know how they decide who plays who. Looking well, at the chip count, yeah. Seaver, you, you get more chips on. if you fire. For the yeah. Yeah. He is really is going blind? Yeah. Yeah. determined not to be eliminated. He now I'm holds over half the chips in play. Remember, tonight we will lose one more player from the league. How many chips do you have, John? About 350, 340. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Jungle Man Full. is now actually in play to be knocked Full. out of the Premier League. Wow, with 24 points, yes. too, that's a pretty I great mean, score. I mean, it's not a, there was only a few permutations Full. that would knock, Jungle Man reckoned he was a 98% favorite to make the heads ups. And I can tell you right now that look, if Scott Seaver wins, it's been a lot of and Antonio comes, I believe second or third. The seat seven card. Then Jungle Man oh, will today. actually get a call, and it's really it's not going to be fair not to be able to witness his reaction. Wow. I think I think he needs to. We need to get him back on the rail. <laughs> Agreed. We got to get him back. <laughs> Send a taxi for the Jungle Man. Thirty-one thousand. And for Duhan Mel, who's currently on uh, twenty-two points. Uh, Getting knocked out right now because of where Seaver and Esfandiari are could actually still he, he's in a he's in a he's not in great shape right now. Oh my oh, gosh! Man. Yeah, I like that. Oh, you know, but like that, that was his premier league. That was his premier league. Like I was rooting for oh, an insta call. <laughs> yes! Insta call would have been very in nice. Up. No! Wow! First card was an ace. I got I, he obviously doesn't know. <laughs> wow. He obviously doesn't know because uh, <laughs> Duhamel knocked out right now gets 22 points. And both S. Van Diari and Seaver can pass him. No. He's in. Uh, that was. Wow, I did not know that. Oh, I'm, 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 we couldn't have known right it here. either. Yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't think Duhamel's uh, done any preparation. Like we said, he's over it. I mean, Seaver Four should. Times. Should right. actually I, I like lean over. Right. No, should lean over and, and make sure he knows. Mm -hmm. I can pass you if I win and you go no. next. Oh, no, we would tie. You would pass would me, but I'm already in the uh, heads up. I, I think it would be impossible for me not to make. Brian oh, Rash just realized in the heads we up. Just both be uh, do you see Duhamel looking at the sheet right now? He is not in the heads up. It's six twelve. The closest way I can figure to explain this is that Brian Rast has got a shot a to get in the There's a sweet chance four, that all of us Daniel make Cates, it. Daniel Cates, along with Duhamel, Esfandiari, and Scott Seaver. very likely. Three yeah. of we'll those have to have four this players um, will be in the heads well, up, but yeah. there's not enough room as for one of them. As always, someone that isn't so goes out All next. the players on this table, Seaver, Esfandiari, and Duhamel, could knock out Daniel Cates, and if they don't, one of them is going to be bumped, and it'll most likely be the next guy out. Look, because, like, Cates has 24 points. If we all pass Cates, then we're all in and everyone else is out. Exactly. Cates probably thought he was pretty healthy at 24, Cates said right? he thought he was like a lock. Yeah. And now yeah. he's he's in big trouble, Phil actually. Locke. 6 12? That's yeah, six exactly 12. right. Jungle Man yeah. thought he was a lock, and now you he's John, in potential out next, trouble. You're out. If that doesn't happen, you guys are chilling. Probably between S. Fandiari and Duhamel, whichever one of their, Full. they're kind of in a last longer. 
Fault. At this at this stage. Yeah. Seat seven raised twenty four thousand. And if Rast is the next one out, it helps both of them. And then uh, it hurts the jungle man. Mizzy knows that Seaver's opening a hundred percent, pretty much ninety. What does Mizzy do? We raise all in. He's gone all in. And now that saves Antonio oh, with the ace eight. Antonio got oh, saved. Oh, is Mizzy a lock eight for eight. heads up now? He is. Oh, I, I believe Mizzy is now a lock, lock for the final for table. The final table. Uh, okay, okay, that makes sense. If Mizzy had folded yeah, that with yeah, Antonio yeah, gone all in, he would have yeah. won the chips. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, yeah. well no, I mean that's that's not true. That's not true. I had something. He has to stay ahead of Brian Rass in a sense. I mean, if that was a Mitzi, you know, I am calling that. Mi Mizzy has now, Mizzy has now got 31 points. Like, I just need like nine spots. And, uh, whatever. Uh, Rast can really still get yeah, 34, yeah. but it's it's kind of a, a free roll, if you know what I mean, because Mizzy Hold. wants to get if he gets top two, Hold. he'll then have 37. I think he actually needs top one. I think he feels like he's kind of free rolling. So these guys behind first. him have around 22 bigs. I think he might just open shove this. Before I make this play, I want to ask myself, what would Vanessa Sulps do? <laughs> All right. Yeah, he did. Yeah. One raise, 170,000. Yeah. I, I think so precise. I actually, mm -hmm. I, I think Mizzy might be right about the dynamics <laughs> here that allow him. Oh to my God! Forward. How bad do I? Coon is walking wow, out of the look commentary at rest. box. And this oh, is a clear wow. call for Rast because he's free rolling. It's a clear call for Brian Rast because he's he's he cannot be knocked down to the top eight, and he can again. still. I just have to get past that. And that's you know, and Kuhn has gone nuts in the counter box. He's, like he's outside yeah. in the hallway doing spins and oh. walking back and forth. I can't believe it's just oh, oh wow! Thank you. Wow. Wow. Oh, 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 oh my God! Wow. Wow, Antonio escaped that. Thank God he did that. At A6. Wow, wow, wow. And wow. Yeah, I wonder Thank God you just shoved. Wow, Oof. if Mizzy had raises, I go bust. Yeah. Raise. Antonio would raise and lose All right, money I instead. love you, but Mizzy, I hope you get there, kid, one time in your this, life. This is incredible. Terrible one for Jason Kuhn life, because Brian Rast needs top three. Just he's one about time. to double luck and do it, no problem. You can. I, you, know, you know? I haven't used my one time in a while. Nearly as many times as you have. <laughs> I feel like I've been like saving them for these. This moments. is also terrible for right, the audience. Wow. It's is great it for the that? jungle, man. No, he doesn't. Give me a no, no, sweat. Sweat. The jungle is quite happy. Oh, sweat. Sweat. Come on, one time. Sweat. One time. Oh, he's got the club. He's got the club. That's okay. Come on. Right. She got Let's five go. outs. Kungen. All right, Jason. King of the turn. Call it in here, Jason. No across. No across. Nice sweater. Each individual card. King Rast Four sided wants diamond. Hold. King, King. Mm. No across. Come on, Four I need it. Need That's it. all I want. I don't care if it's a 9 or 10. Just give me that 50. 140, 80, 190, 195. Just right. 197. 140. Yeah. Brian Rast keeps him alive. Yeah. Brian Rast keeps him alive. 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 Most of the players are hoping Rast goes out next to help secure their places in at least the playoffs. However, after that double up, he has moved into second on the leading board. I'm more tilted than any person at that table right now from that last hand. Yeah, that was. I apologize. I just feel like I got punched right in my stomach. You did, bro. You did. Welcome to the land of just poker. Like, I, this Premier League is. There's just been a pattern. It's like been me like really happy and then just getting my heart. Since the stabbed. World Series of Poker Europe. You've just been getting it at oh, 81%, yeah. 81%. Right. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me about that, buddy. Well, it's here, too. Quads. Yeah. They just keep... <laughs> yeah. Um, they have a written somewhere. Where do you know that? What's for? the difference of chips in the final table between first, second, third, and fourth? Thank you. This question Sorrell's asking is quite significant. And the answer, I obviously, like is that first place gets 550,000, second is 400,000, third is 300,000, and fourth is 225,000. Can, can you say that one more time, or let me read it? Two zeros and, and, uh, it and those are all so plus a thousand no chips of point the final table. Oh, okay. So it's quite a significant a spread. You just yeah, I didn't win, know first basically. was 550. Yeah, if I won, I just auto down. Yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah. Oh. So I guess I'm like, I was like 15%. 
Now, in some of the past yeah. seasons, the, I mean, the chips weren't spread as much be between yeah. the top. So, but I mean, maybe it, you were it, like, it, the, the one, it's one of the yeah, tweaks they made this seven year. Race, and it's, it's just made it so much more competitive for the guys mm -hmm. in the top four to really push it out. I think it's had a huge effect. No way, that's right. I'm all in. C2 re-raise all in. Antonio just shipped the King 4. I think I gotta do it, but I'm not sure. How much is that? About 216, just bring a Francis. Okay. Yeah, now if Scott Seaver would eliminate Antonio Asfandiari here, I this believe is the sickest bubble ever. he's not guaranteed to be out of the Premier League, but I think it's it's bad. It's not so good for Antonio. Yeah, bring it back. What do you think about, should Seaver call this based on, on the situation? Hmm. Sorry, guys. Does he need Antonio to stay alive for anything? Uh, I believe by knocking Antonio out that he can get in with a second. I think... This is going to be very loose, but I think I need to do it here. I need him to go here. How much? 212. 212. Antonio, we'll get this. Twenty. Yeah, I call. Call. Jeez, He's actually, he to might be able. For space. I'm sorry, he might be able to get yeah. third. He might be able to get third in yeah, that Antonio out. Right. Nice hands here. And that's why he's called. And this this is probably Antonio's Premier League because Scott will just need to go two more places. Oh, one time can I get there? What are you rooting for, Jason? Uh, I actually need, uh, I don't need it, but I want Antonio to double. Uh, because I, want, I need Rats to, to be next out. Right? Six or yeah. ten of spades. He can be fourth, yeah. too, but... And I think this is good for Jungle Man. If Antonio gets knocked yeah, out, Chop will work. Chop will work. Chop will work, and he's seven, sure. eight. Uh, it can't be the eight of clubs. Yeah. Can't be the eight of clubs, that's true. Not eight of clubs. Good luck, boys. So Antonio S. Vandiari is not officially out of the Premier League, but it's not good for him. And it looks like that's great for Jonathan Duhamel. I believe he's just guaranteed his place in the top Eight. Honestly, after looking at it, I would have called it with like six, seven. Man has just yeah, yeah, his place I had to call with any two. Yeah, you don't want to. I had to look at it. Because now instead. By the way, he shouldn't shove their light because you want to call him. I had to double check, but yeah. I thought I had to call him any two. But then I thought I did it wrong. Like I was like, because now, now instead of top two, now I only need top three. Anti travels. So for Antonio wow. Espandiari, so he is now out of the Premier League. Like, raise, 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 raise. Great for Jungle Man. Right. Right. It was huge for Jungle Man. Jungle Man's in now. Yeah, yeah. Jungle Man, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Jungle. So just to recap about the four players left at this table, Scott Seaver is guaranteed to be in the top eight as long as he is not the next player out. Jonathan Duhamel guaranteed to be top eight. Brian Rast can get in the top four by not being the next player out. And Sorrell Mizzy can become the chip leader at the final table by winning. So everybody right now has something to play for. We've lost Antonio from this heat, but there is one situation where you will come back and play in the heads up, and that's if Scott Seaver is the next player out. So uh, will you be sticking around to watch and see if that happens? No, just send me a text and let me know how it goes. <laughs> he has all the chips, so I doubt that's going to happen. I mean, I was in a really bad spot because Duomo had twice as many chips yeah. as me. Scott had all the chips, and so... You know, I'm just getting Annie to death, and Scott's opening so many hands. I had to. I, I didn't think he had a big hand, mm. um, the way he looked at his cards. So I just went with it to try and pick up some chips. Unfortunately, he had me dominated. Yeah. We're gonna keep an eye on it for you, and we'll let you know. And hopefully, we'll see you in the heads up. Thank you. Thank you. It's crunch time for our Premier League players as the last league match continues after the break. It tricked you. It tricked me. Luck. It's not the best hand to be up against. I have a hand that's not good, but unfoldable. Whoops. Season 7 of the Party Poker Premier League is here at the Playground Poker Club in Montreal, Canada. And in the last heat, we're down to four players. Our latest name to bow out is Antonio Esfandiari, who leaves the table with five points. Now, the only way for him to qualify for the next round is if Scott Seaver gets knocked out next. Let's head back to the action. Interestingly enough for Jonathan Duhamel, um, uh, he only goes through to the Final Four if he wins and Brian Rast finishes fourth or third. So Duhamel will have a look at this and realize that he uh, he needs to 
to not only win, but to knock out Rast. That's probably good for Seven you, call. Jason. Yeah. One call. And so for Seaver, it's, it's interesting. I mean, he's got three times as many chips as everyone on the but table, and yet he players. still can be knocked out of this Premier League if he's the next player out. So a double through would make things very interesting. And, I mean, you know, what are correct tactics for Scott Seaver in this spot? I like the fact that Mizzy just flopped two pair. Uh, that's oh, no, Brian. it's Rast. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it so much. At least there's a lot of gutters out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mizzy's on a, you know, kind of a kind of free roll. One bet, 27,000. I assume Rast will just go ahead and raise now. Right, Rast is a. Uh, it's 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 interesting for Rast because actually he's probably the one he with raised the most seventy-two thousand to total uh, in this uh, yeah. seventy-two situation. total. And yet he does cover Sorel here. He probably has Hope. to call a shove. Yeah. But uh, we can almost start looking ahead, uh, Jason, uh, in the in the event that you do end up uh, yeah, probably the be the fifth. Likely event. Right. Yeah. It'll look like you know you're going to be fifth, and in that case, you'll be playing the eighth place finisher in the heads up match, which um, is well, if Scott Seaver were to win, it, it'll it'll probably either be uh, Scott or Jungle Man, <laughs> my guess. Unbelievable. I think if Scott wins. Yeah, it's it's so well, yeah. It's I the, mean, or you know, or or possibly Jonathan Duhamel. I mean, it'll it'll be in, in between that group. C three raised twenty seven thousand. Yeah. Um, I'll be ready. Fold. And Seaver is is Seaver now thinking about what you were talking about? I can just put your cards under reading. Uh, Jason, that yeah, Brian I, he Rath definitely can, should be. Yeah. It's a leveling war, isn't it? Rast yeah. knows that Seaver can't get knocked out next. Seaver knows that Rast can't get knocked out next. <laughs> That's quite funny, isn't it? Yeah. Who hates it more? Who, who hates it more? And because Scott Seaver has twice as many chips, he's saying to himself, Rast hates it 77, more. 77,000 total. And this is a message. And is, wow, is nah. Rast cool enough to send him a message back? No, nah, I think it's a little, a little bit suicidal. Probably just find a fold. So, Brian Rast actually, he, he dipped his finger in that cookie jar a few times, and yeah. Scott Seaver said to him, look, you know, keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, I think Seaver's just gonna keep pushing it too. He should. Winning this tournament would be great because maybe it puts another feather in the cap and shows that the first one wasn't just a fluke. I came to Vienna to play the Premier League knowing nothing of the format, the players, the characters, the time it really takes. And honestly, it was a bit of an overwhelming shock at first, but I tried to handle it as well as I can. I just tried to play my game. I got lucky and I emerged victorious. I feel recently that I've been playing great poker and I'm confident. Everyone always feels that they're confident or they should, but that doesn't belittle how important it is. I think I'm playing well and therefore I'm more confident in my game and the decisions I'm making and hopefully this all translates into a big win. Jason, in order for you to get a top four finish and a guaranteed seat at the final, seat three you raised need Ryan Rash to fold, go out fold. next and Jonathan Duhamel not to win. Yeah, you Otherwise, you right will right. have to face the playoffs. I think when you guys were building Premier League, you said, let's pick the most heartbreaking form of poker we possibly can and just continue to crush these guys. <laughs> I'm going to have gray hair by the time this one's <laughs> over. Oh, my God. 
I believe Rast may just second. sort Mizzy out. World, why are you so cruel <laughs> to me? I mean, it's a listen, there's still there's still three jacks in the deck, Jason. Oh my God, man! It's Don't like, lose hope. Don't oh, lose hope. Oh but uh, if Brian Rast does stack Sorrel Mizzy here, yeah, he's going to stack him. Yep. Uh, a lot of things will be de will be decided. <sighs> and is there any way Sorrell? He really has to stack off here, doesn't he? I mean, all in. C1 raise all in. All we got in an call. all in, and we got a call. So. Jason, obviously this is not decisive for Rast and Duha Mel. They'll still be fighting it out for the fourth spot. Uh, however, Sorrell, if he gets knocked out there. here, like, will be in third stick. chips at that final, and it'll be between Rast and Duha Mel for the fourth spot. You're gonna be relegated to the heads up, so uh, a lot to play for there. Should it go the other way? Should Busy spike a card? Yeah, that's, that's the way it should go. Then everything opens up again. And obviously, by Mizzy getting eliminated, very good chance Scott the Seaver turn will be a gutter card. A good card for you, right? Like, uh, it's, 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 it's not the best hand to be up against. I'll just take two hearts. Eight of hearts, how about that? That'd be awesome. But there's worse. I'm okay with the chop. So about six Premier League players right now. Uh, their fortunes are riding on Cohen's this card. Buttons went hard. Is he? Mizzy, yeah. Rast, Duhamel, Seaver, Coon, Jeff Gross. Locks out. Two pair holds, yeah, again, and so. that is official. There's still going to be a lot to play yeah, for. I think I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mizzy is going to be third. Seaver, yeah, very happy. He's done what I'm he's had to do. Jason Kuhn definitely going to be in the heads up. And Brian Rast, a very good shot now to be in the top four. That is, of course, unless Jonathan Duhamel knocks him out next and goes on to win. So <laughs> it's incredible what's happened here. We've lost Sorrell from this heat, but you will be going forward onto the final table. It depends on whether you're in third or fourth place, you know, depending on how this finishes off. Now, talk to me about how this heat was for you, because this is where the points really come into play and people kind of get handcuffed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I had a mission. I came in here with a very clear mission that if I got sixth, I am a slight favorite to advance to top four, but if I got fifth, I was a lock. Mm. So all I wanted to do was get top five. Now my only sweat is Brian Rass. Like I need him to not win, and if he doesn't win, then I'm going to be third going into the final table, which is 275,000 chips. So pretty decent. Definitely an advantage. We'll be keeping an eye on it, and we'll see you at the final table. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, so I'm in now. Yeah, you are in 100%. Nothing matters for me at all. Just you guys now. Other things matter. Nothing for me, because all the heads up spots are the same. I'm guaranteed one of those yeah, three heads up spots. Yeah, just a couple spots. thousand. Whatever. Yeah, so whatever. I'll still. I'm gonna try. Yeah, try to make a couple thousand bucks, but I have no pressure, guys. What we do know for sure is who is going to be chip leader 000. at this final table. It'll be Jeff Gross. So I don't. Have you ever been oh. in a spot where? You not only have to win, but you have to knock someone out first. I mean, that's the spot that Duhamel is in with Rast. It's definitely not normal. But, like, I feel like if I'm Scott hey. Seaver right now, every Emily. time Duhamel comes into the pot, you want to raise him. Whom for the heads up matches? Check. Oh, what a card there. Check. I don't really know how I'd go to bat with Jonathan Duhamel. I guess you just have to say, isn't it incredible to you uh, how Jonathan Duhamel has done in this 22. heat? I mean, uh, twenty-two thousand. He just did. He kind of. We feeling that at the table that this is a yeah. guy who should be playing tight, oh. but obviously doesn't care, and because of that, I might not be able to push him around, type of thing. You mean oh today? Duhamel today, yeah. Um, you know what? To be honest, today I didn't. I did feel he was being a little tight. I could just tell how Check. he was entering Check. pots and like what was going on. But with that being said, he had Vanessa Selbst, who was That's like good. already the most aggressive probably player in general, and no, knowing today she was like. She was going to play every single pot. You know, she just was trying to find any way and against who and why.
guy finding reasons. So it's was, it was really a bad seat for him and also for me for that matter because I, I mean, anytime one of us opened, she was calling or raising. So um, at first, I think it actually may have helped him that Vanessa was on his direct left and it just he was just playing very tight but I think as he should be. Yeah, yeah. Here is a reminder of the current chip stack. Scott Seaver is still flying with 1.3 million chips. Rast is now slowly catching up and it looks like Jonathan Duhamel is in trouble. If he is out next, he will have to face the playoffs. For Scott Seaver, he is in the playoffs no matter what, so the pressure is off. Scott has definitely made the top eight. You're going to be in the heads up. And you're playing against two opponents who are kind of in a locked in a battle together, both wanting to make the final table. So how could that be an advantage for you? Honestly, it's a great situation. They have a lot to play for. I'm just trying to collect some chips, collect some money, and just try and, you know, apply a little pressure. So pressure helps if you've got a lot of chips. Uh, <laughs> anything you can give us an insight into what we might see out there? Uh, I'm going to be playing a lot of hands and probably winning a lot of them, hopefully. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. It's all about accumulating points here at the Premier League, and Sorrell Mitzi has just secured seven of them as he bows out in fourth spot here in Heat 6. That knockout means that Phil Locke and Antonio Esfandiari join Dan Schack and Vanessa Seltz in the elimination zone. Now the race is on for the remaining players to battle it out for one of the final table seats. Let's get back to the table as the action continues. Lines up to 16,000. Three players left in Heat number six of Premier League Poker 7. And we do know who the eight players in this Premier League will be going forward. What we don't know yet is exactly which four are going straight to the final table and which four are being in the heads up. Scott Seaver oh. definitely in the heads up. However, uh, his opponent is to be decided. And for Brian Rast, any finish except oh, for third place right now uh, and Duhamel winning. Well, he see him in the top Check. four. Jonathan Duhamel can still make the top four should he win and not rast out in third position. And uh, Jeff, so everyone has kind of a, an exact thing to do, but Duhamel has to go after rast first. And then this, this is hand me ten ace four diamonds. This is a huge twenty five thousand. It might not seem huge, but trust me, it is because you have the runner, runner, the diamond, the five. And yeah, you like this, flop. this is a good flop. You don't need to connect clean, clean like with Data Diamonds. And now Duo almost, you know, he's obviously in here. This is well, I mean, because Duo really has no bottom and he has to knock out Rast. Is is shoving a bad play here, or is the fact that he's like, if I shove, I may get uh, he called. might just lose. Raised all to fifty five thousand. I, I like raising better. I don't. I don't, know. I don't know that I love Rast's lead out. I think it's fine, but like. I don't know. I just don't actually love it. Like I might even check and have the best hand, and now check and this peel is one bet. Yeah, like if but if I'm gonna call a bet, I like to make the bet anyways. I, I think bet fold is okay. normally. Ah, yeah. He's gonna peel here. He's never folding. Well, and yeah, just it's because too strong a hand to fold. Huh? He may even just ship it. Because rat. Well, it, it, I, I mean, Joel wow. going in. Wow. All in. This is not. Oh. This did not go as Rast saw this. Absolutely yeah. not. He I still guess. has a lot of value. I mean, look at the. This is the hand with backdoor draws. Remember, if you're gonna do a gutsy bluff, have outs. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely. <laughs> so this this was this was crazy withouts. Luck. Yeah. Whoops. Oh look at that! Wow! Wow! Kills the ace. Kills though. the ace, but yeah, up, kills the ace. But it gives it gives him a lot more chances That's because 26 percent screams, "I have a chance." Any diamond, any five. Oh, and that's Hooray. the fascinator. And for Jonathan wow. like Duhamel, like that yeah. means that he will definitely be in the heads up. He will now so. play either yeah. Jungle Man or Scott Seaver. That's to be determined. And for Brian Rast, that officially means that he is going to be going straight to the final table. When you consider, guys, that Brian Rast was dead last in the point standings after two heats, he has been brilliant in heats five and six. We lose Jonathan here in third place, and that means that you're going to be going into the heads up. Obviously not how you were hoping to finish, but uh, talk to us about who you'd rather play in the heads up. Uh, wow, that's a good question. Actually, I have no idea who's, who's in the heads up as right now. I think uh, there's a lot of chances I'm going to be playing Scott. 
Uh, but I mean, whatever it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a fun match. I think there's a lot of uh, tough guys out there. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be tough no matter what. Just going to have to bring my A game. Uh, you know, gamble a little bit because those guys are good. Uh, blinds goes up pretty fast also. So gamble a little bit and uh, hope to be lucky. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, thanks. Does it matter for you? Is it the same thing if uh, yep. if you win, you play Duhamel? If I win, I play Duhamel. If I lose, I play Kuhn. Okay. And as Scott Siever said there, should he beat Brian Rast Sorry, right he now, play uh, he will play Jonathan Duhamel. Should he lose to Brian Rast, uh, he will play Jason Kuhn. And you're in now. I'm in. Now just looking now to get in some bonus chip. Third. Have a look, though, at the heads up stats. It's, it's really hard to sort of make any sense because it's been such a strange heat. So it, it is big for Brian Rast here because uh, should he come second in this, he's going to end up being in uh, fourth place at the final table and have 225,000 chips at the final. And the chance 42. now to beat Scott Seaver and get three an extra 75,000 chips at that final. K to play. Call 42. He does. So Seaver on the button, making it 42. And it looks like Rast has outflopped him. This would be a big difference if Seaver had the ace of hearts, seven of diamonds. 53,000. It's 000. kind of a drawy board, so in a lot of spots, the ace high is still good now, though, isn't it? Seaver may not know that if he has the ace of hearts or seven of hearts, either. Right, he may say, I'm, I don't need to necessarily oh. look back. Yeah, he, he may uh, just know he has. He does have a heart and he has a seven and there's a lot of turn cards that gives him <laughs> some action and that's one of them. That is definitely one of them. And in it's good for both of them, which is interesting. I mean, if, you, if you're Rast and you bet and get called, you love this five and if you're Seaver and you peel, you love this card. So nobody's going anywhere. Yeah, this could actually end up being a spot where Rast is out of position dominated and based on how this board flopped and how he's leading out and now leading again, uh, there's a good chance that... 95,000. Well, it's a good chance he could win this pot and on a showdown if somehow they go to showdown. I mean, Scott right. could think his ace high is good. I mean, he's beating some, like, hearts. He is, I mean, there's hands he's beating, even though Rast has led twice now. So it's, it's kind of a little awkward spot. He's definitely going to continue having the seven. And ace high. I wonder. Could he ever turn his hand into a bluff and put like Rasty on a king queen and it, and oh yeah, that's a defensive bet, but he would never call a shove. And I'll get if he calls, I have outs anyways. Could that uh, ever be the case? I think he could. He could raise here. I don't think he. I don't know he's going to elect to, but I don't think he's with the intention of getting Rast to fold the king queen. Okay. I mean, I just don't think it's too king queen is just too big. So he has to. If the calling is just so painful. It just costs so much, but. I mean, he thinks he might. Wow, he is doing the, the uh, he might have king-queen move. He went he's for the getting, raise. He's got two ways to win the hand now. I think he just asked himself the magic fill lock question. If I go all in, can he call? But he hasn't gone all he, in. Okay, he's gotten the same effect because this polarizes, uh, you know, basically in Rath's mind, Seaver raised. It's, very, it's something with hand get to the river. It has value. What a call by Rast, and if, if it Rast blanks, if the an, river if blanks. If an eight comes, if an eight comes, I think we're going to see Seaver in a lot of pain. <laughs> There's definitely action. Because Rast isn't going anywhere with an eight. What if the river blanks? Uh, it depends on the blank. It, it, ooh, that's pretty blanky. I mean, Seaver has set himself up for a pot size shove barrel. Now, check. this is a this is a, actually a card. Check. That oh my God, Scott yeah. just gave up. He didn't he even consider it. He just checked that ace high might be good, but that he uh, it's not a really good board from the bluff because the, all the straights missed and there's two flush draws that missed. So Ras is going to pick him off if he has yep. like a king or whatever he's going to call. Oh. I, don't you think he's getting the the big bluff yep. through though? I mean, he's he's obviously that was not so to know. Sick. I am wow. surprised Scott snap checked, even though I think he was going to check. I think at you the should, end. even if you're snap checking, you should tank yeah, check a little bit to for wait for. Uh, what do you call it? Balancing your weight. Putting jam on half the deck, but the wrong half came. Yeah, jack of clubs. Jack of That's clubs. A brick. Maybe half, more reason why you fold. Scary. You might fold a brick, but I had too big a draw. Dry and rats. I'm gonna be betting too many other things anyways. The chip lead, and uh, of course the difference for him, should he win rather than get second here, is about leapfrogging Sorel Mizzy. Thirty-six uh, thousand. As far as chips go for the oh. final table. He's got uh, Seaver locked up here. This Jack, could be all over on Jack the jackpot. Oh. <laughs> Check. I'd, 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 
I'd say this one is, I'd say you could cook this goose. <laughs> yeah, they're, they are fairly deep though. There's a chance it doesn't get in, but it's pretty likely. 43,000. Seaver does have that cart also. Back some back doors. He's just gonna call. Right, so it's it's a, it's about how safe the how safe the Turner River is for barrel barrel, right? Because barrel barrel might just get us. Yeah, there. like an ace will slow it down. A heart would ace wow, hearts the is ace like the one action card Check. in the deck killer. Wow, Rasp might end up getting yeah. bet off this hand. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, if he bets and Seaver goes all in, I mean Rasp will fold. I think. Wow, the sick part is he does. Seaver does have the blocker for the nuts too. Yeah, he, which and is he has. Like, he could do it as a semi bluff in case the ace hit Ras. Is it the right play? He thinks his hand's too valuable. He's just calling. Call. Oh wow. Ras is this actually now could be a little bigger pot. Check. Oh, well, Ras is Ras actually loves this card. Ras may value bet this, but uh, he it's gonna might. be a little thin. No. <laughs> but he's such a beast, could he value bet it? He knows that. Would a beast value bet here? A beast would value bet a, a king or a jack. I mean, sorry, a six or a jack. He's gonna get called here. He might <laughs> he's gonna bet like 170. Maybe a little bigger, it looks like, actually. Seaver hates this. Seaver hates it. Seaver gonna... often folds these when he's beat. Yeah, he does. He doesn't but... know why he's beat, but the math says. 230,000. I don't understand it, but maybe it's just he just has a six or. I don't think Seaver has a made four. a wrong river decision in this no, Premier No, he always league. gets the big ones right. I have a hand that's not good, but unfoldable. <laughs> Did you just say it? Did you hear that? Yeah, unfoldable exactly can't right. play hands. He's unbelievable. But. But it's unfoldable, so you know what can you do? <laughs> God, he's secretly unfoldable. Just the secretly best. can never win. Secretly cannot win, and it's unfoldable. He's exactly Call. right. That's Call. why king in kings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. I, didn't have I mean, the how good is Scott Seaver? I mean, I that yeah. He didn't get it right, but he, he basically did. You hear what he said, too? He yeah. said, if I didn't have the heart, I think I'd fold. But he had the king of hearts, which made him like less likely. What a sick run out. Ace of hearts, then yeah. another ace. Just outrageous. Yeah, I was, I was uh, not planning on betting many river cards, yeah, obviously. Perfect one. But it's like the And because I have the king of hearts, that's like what they did. I'll tell you what, Jason Coons be shaking his boots right now because it looks like he's going to have to try and beat Scott Seaver, heads up. Oh, well. Yeah, and, and Seaver just has all cylinders firing. And as good as, as great as Jason is, you even, as you I know, he gives that, Scott that Seaver about as much credit as anyone out there. So it's like, <laughs> I wonder what game that is. Even yeah. though, Probably about as even, you know, they're both just great players. Looks like there's seats open. A Big matchup in his mind. I think it's four left in this right. tournament. And how oh, do yeah. you handicap the jungleman Duhamel? <laughs> Is that all in, uh, all in first hand? It's going to be 32. Yeah, that'll be the faster match. Oh, 32 now, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you bet under that minimum. What did I do? Oh, you I only just put out 20 sucks. Yeah, so although Scott. Scott's significantly Call shorter now, but he still has. I had the wrong amount ones. out there before or something. No, you were small no, no, blind. No, just tossed out. Just tossed out. He's got over 20, 35, 000. so his full range of options, really. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Check. Well, the deck is just conspiring to get the chips in, isn't it? Check. This. Just, Did they just go just, check, check? That's pretty un unbelievable. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, the Rass might get saved because this is like yeah, that's very kind of... easy for Rass to get away where it was very hard a second ago. So what was the like reason for Rass not betting that flop to get it in? He had flopped too fast. Pot control, <laughs> genius, King Rass. Feeling, just feeling. He's just going to call here. Call 55. And he's going to lose the minimum or he get away. 7 or an 8 and stack him. Oh, he does have 7 8. Yeah. He's the rest. Feels Snap. like a four diamonds. We get to see. Check. Rally. Check. Really? Check. Straight. Uh, rest very calmly. I, I think a jungle man reaction might have been different. <laughs> I think you're right. I think that that would be the plot difference. <laughs> What's the uh, 
four letter words in a row is 16 letters. Yeah, right? and a new deck of cards. <laughs> 36,000. Call. Check. Queen high versus king high. Check. Rast, queen high is a lot different. Rast actually has a hammock, and if he had less, he might have bet. But Check. I think, he, you know what I'm saying? Because any queen nine or jack is, uh, well, there's the jack. <laughs> Scott, it's just the, Scott probably figured out now he probably had the best hand, except this river I don't think he's going to like. And that's kind of. Right. All Scott's sudden, like, uh, I probably had the best hand, but why are all these checks? Maybe he caught up. Well, if Rast has ace high in this spot a lot, does Steve think maybe he has to try and bet him off it? Yeah, I think Rast would fold the nice high. 90,000. But he's not going to fold the nut straight. No, it's, and he's not going to raise this straight either. I think he might raise. Uh, I bet you he raises. <laughs> he's going to make it like 230. And if you're going to get cooler in a head up well, spot, hoping to get called by what, ace jack a or ten, ten? Is a worse yeah. straight. Like really? he's just, I mean, there's no way a boat is really out. There's just not a boat here. And it's heads up. It's different. I'd, yeah. He's going to race. He has Will to you race. Give me eight to one? Uh, I'd give you more than four to one. Six to one? You got it. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Raise. I think you've just I lost. lost $10. Did he bet exactly 10, 230? I should get a bonus. <laughs> I lost ten dollars. Two hundred and fifteen thousand. I'm glad JG didn't want to hurt me for a big number. <laughs> I had six to one. I have to go. Yes. I think at six to one. I mean, I have to just go that King Rass gets a bad read and thinks I could be against his fours. You know. <laughs> Is he gonna get Scott to pile it off here? <laughs> Scott's certainly not calling. Yeah, it's just oh. you know, he's either doing some kamikaze. Or I'm glad you didn't bet me a thousand. I can't afford to give six thousand. So you're safe. <laughs> safe. I lost ten dollars. That's the smallest pickup. <laughs> Thank God Coon wasn't here. I would have lost a thousand. Oh my God. The smallest pickup in the history yeah, of Premier no, League. He's, he's, yeah. Well, whatever. It was out, yeah. He's just raising. <laughs> you gotta By the way, I wouldn't. I'm I was tight, not going to bet more than ten or twenty dollars. Yeah. You kidding me? There was like fifteen <laughs> or twenty to one. Which, if you want to get a thousand down, you'd have to give me fifteen to one. Because Rast has to mess up the hand really. Quick. Yeah. Call. Oh, Seaver decides to limp now with less than twenty blinds. And he may be limp shoving, yeah, right? Yeah, I think he 75,000 total. It's the first hand all he's in. done it, yeah. We raise all in. He just ran into all it in here, call. guys. Yeah. I mean, not just now, but basically every hand he's had in this yep. heads up, Rast has had a little better. Maybe, Rast. maybe he can dog him, though. Rast, you're the best. How do you do it, kid? So let's be clear about what we're playing for. If this hand holds, Seaver plays Coon. Pretty good, good flop. flop. <laughs> for not a bad one. Probably one of the best. And Jungleman oh. will play Duhamel. Brian Rast will be third at the final table in chips. Anything but an ace will have that result. Just behind Jeff Gross. Ace from space, as Van Tony Coleman G would say. Ace from space. Barry Greenstein or... Oh, oh. ace from space. Wow. Tony G, Barry Greenstein, they're How coming through with ace in the room. Wow. Oh, just to be clear, it was not rooting one, for one, that. 1260. Gross. Look at Scott, you know, he just looks like he had the best hand, just very calmly count his chips out. <laughs> like, expected it. <laughs> That's a very big hit for Rass. For what could have been the end now could be the middle of something that doesn't go his way anyway. Rast with the two to one chip advantage still, but could Seaver's luck be about to change? It's developing into a humdinger of a heads up battle between these two. I think Scott plays poker really well. Definitely a student of the game. I think you know he's thought a lot about how to play poker, and I respect 
the way that he plays. Just outrageous. In my mind, he's one of the 10 best no limit hold'em players in the world. He's an absolute force of the game, and he's been around for years, which you might not guess from his age, but he's been playing forever and at the absolute highest level. Boom! I just put the balls on the table and said, it's time to go home. Oh, go big or go home. My most memorable poker experience with Scott was heads up. World Series event where we played heads up and like on round one and I got the best of them and you know I'm sure Scott remembers that. He's just a great guy too. It's great to have him at a table because he's fun, he tells jokes, and then he takes all your chips. We're heads up here at Premier League 7. Before the break, Jonathan Duhamel left the table in third spot with nine points. Now with just two players left, we will finalize the league positions. Let's rejoin your commentators. It's been a heck of a last heat. Vanessa Selps with the bagel, of course. She, uh, she actually was oh so close to getting in her 40,000 in this Premier League. She got stopped <coughs> short. Call. Was there a point during this heat early on, Jeff, where you kind of thought, oh no, Vanessa's about to take over? Yeah, she, there was a few times actually, Check. especially right away. I, she was, you could tell she was in there every pot and she won a couple. And then uh, she took some hits and it looked like it was all over. And then she doubled with the king six, the king queen on Antonio, and then made the move against Rast all in. 50,000. I didn't see what she had, but um, she chipped up back to around 200 and it looked like she was going to not go quietly. Not a great hand for Seaver here, but Rast is a little bit vulnerable. Wow, has he found a check raise? How does he find a check raise here? <laughs> 140. And this is one of those spots, isn't it? You know, neither player has anything. You kind of feel like force of will will win the hand. I'm not sure here what Rast is going to do. Rast actually has a hand. That's yeah. the problem. But Rast likes it. Yeah. Call. Rast does like it. He doesn't like that. Does he have a diamond? Neither player has a diamond. Seaver has to power through. He'll win it with a barrel here, right? The flush is in his is in his range. In his check raise range, yeah. I think he's definitely gonna be betting because he knows he's not gonna win if he doesn't. Oh, that one in the hand should do it. Take that, King Rast. One ninety. What are we gonna do about this? Not really. So Scott Seaver fighting to stay away from Jason Kuhn and uh, draw Jonathan Duhamel in the heads up. That um, seems like a... So, okay, so it's I get it's Duhamel if Seaver wins, wins. And then what would be the other heads up? Jungleman Kuhn? Yes. Forty-five thousand. Five more. Oh. I, ju I juiced it. I juiced it. I tricked you. I tricked, tricked me. Jason would prefer, I guess, Jungleman. I yeah. have to bet. I, I'm pretty sure that is what Jungleman does for a living is play heads up. So <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know who you would want. Seaver's going to like this flop. 60. Call. So Rast led at this from the big blind? That's the gym card in the deck. Even though Rast doesn't have anything, but he's a guy who's capable of repping having something. I mean, Seaver raised this on the button pre-flop, right? So I mean, is he more likely to have an ace in this spot? In Scott's mind, this is the absolute Gym. best possible yeah. spot. Like this is like, wow, he has an ace here. And by the way, yeah, that's what Seaver's thinking. I think he's gonna have to raise and rep the the bluff just, just to, that he, yeah. I mean he has oh, he's gonna he could go I could see either way being fine there. Wow. So he's giving Rast oh. a chance to barrel this out. That's also the school. reason not to raise, because if he doesn't have an ace, you're gonna 
you just he's done with it. Oh my! He's got a straight flush. Oh, guy has a straight flush, and unfortunately, <laughs> how big's the pot? Yeah, I don't see Rast just oh, going all dude. in, but uh, it's not impossible. Rast might that. be That's... worried that he's against the full house. It's possible that Seaver called with a set. You know, <laughs> possible. That does not look like a man who has a straight flush. Does he looks grumpy? <laughs> unhappy. He looks like, yeah. Why am I here? How greedy are you, Scott? He's going for it. Yeah. That's a buffet bet. Go back for the second load. See again here, this these are the situations where Reading your opponent's so important for what they have, and in this spot it's kind of hard. I mean, you just have to hope he has an ace. But uh, oh. I mean, if you if you were to think that Ras doesn't have anything, you could go for like an induced, you know, like a small bet or something. Maybe get him to put it in. But like in this case, he's just hoping he has the ace or a flood or something. Boy, he's he's cold too, Seaver. Isn't it generally considered poor etiquette not to show the straight flush when you make it? I mean, isn't that just kind of like a shared experience you always have with your head up opponent? I don't know if I've ever made one, so I don't know. But I don't know. Isn't <laughs> I've that... seen plenty of people show their shared experience hands. It's true. <laughs> people just want to show. You like, know what oh. I'm saying. You know, you only make a sh How often you, make, you said you've never made one live, Jeff? No, I think I have. I'm just saying, yeah, I think I Depends uh, on the situation. This is high. This is high tech stuff. I know, stuff. but you know, it's forty-five thousand two five at the commerce or something. I understand. You know, it's just, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have to share the experience. <laughs> he shared it with us anyway. <laughs> check, check. Oh, did wow. somebody just bang this? Bet? If if Seaver had bet his gutters, the eight gutter would rest have folded. Fifty five thousand. It sure feels like it. It feels like he's gonna put some oh. money in here for his gutter. Yeah. Because remember, if he hits a ten, he'll think it's probably good. Oh my super god. Super nutter butter. This is That's super cami. Ca super cami hand. Rast is gonna d give the clean double up. I don't think you can. F I mean, you're gonna put your opponent more likely on a set than a. A queen ten or a seven ten or five. So there's three straights of better. Four, five, six. Scott seven. Seaver's got a nice uh, stone nut face, but he has the eighth nuts. Set of threes is only the eighth best hand. <laughs> <laughs> so remember that when you get the nuts, it's not necessarily <laughs> nuts. There could be not just one better hand, but seven better hands. <laughs> three fifty. Yeah. So he's actually not going to go broke here. Maybe. I mean, he probably, he might actually eighth just call. He's good. Well, it's only the eighth best hand. He can't shove. <laughs> it's the eighth. It's number eight. <laughs> this is a crying call for King Ras. <laughs> crying call. All right. He's never raising. Call. He only can. He's the eighth nuts. He just calls. Yeah. Straight. <laughs> the Ras on life support. He must be a little frustrated right now. It was a nice run out. It was a decent one. Oh, as hot as he now. was, yeah. They just flip flopped. It was literally Scott had 400, and now it's reversed. And and Rast made that comment like I wanted to say how good I was running, yep. but I didn't. Call. Cards on the scanner, please. Thank you. Check. Fifty-five thousand. Oh, over bets. Fair enough. He's flopped two pair a lot. Yeah. And why? Why the over bet? What is that? Because mean? Rast would bet the flop with Jack Ten. Yeah. The best hand that he could have here would be King Six or King Nine. Um, so when you're dealing with cap ranges, you kind of get to apply the appropriate pressure and basically say, "Hey, I know you don't have the nuts, and I can't have the nuts, so I'm going to attack you." And that's why you. You're faced with larger bets. 
Wow. Race. So right Rest here. Induced. And how did he? In, that was because the overbet. It looks yeah, weak. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so great. He's so crafted him. But this is just one of those things. One hundred sixty-five thousand. I think Scott's gonna sniff it out. Not just because he has two pairs. Just because, almost always, Rast will just be betting. Jack ten on the flop, just trying to fold king three or check all ace in. deuce or something Raise like that. Raise all in. See, so it's pretty easy to sniff out. Um, fold. Occasionally, you are going to be coolered by the king six or king nine, and king nine may even bet the flop for protection. So you're just kind of running into one hand there, and it just doesn't seem that likely. So that was like seven levels above the face of the earth, and Seaver just just totally level. He induced a bluff. Yeah. With the overbet. I don't even know where to start with that. I think you explained it, but... All in. All in. Call. Call. This is familiar. Same hands. Favorite hand. <laughs> yeah, Two right eights. You are. Oh, the eight stays three or four, whatever it was. There it is. I, I, I feel like Scott's just got the... He's got the iron fist right now. We're going to see a long match Mid at the eights hold because... You got to sweat it in. Come sweat it in, Mizzy. Seven out of ten of these, <laughs> he's over for one. Come sweat it in. Yeah, of course. Oh, that's going to be tough, but not over. It's, yeah, two I think we're playing on, on, yeah. playing on or in. Two or three. This is hard, an two ultra or five. hard two sweat. It would have to be the old deuce five. Yeah, based on how it's going to be deuce five. Oh, close. That's not going to do it. Definitely a like, deuce on the river, though. All right, hold on. Three, eighty... Four, four oh three. Oh my God, the ace! On the river every time. That's why I play the hand. <laughs> you can't win yeah, all. That's gonna so. extend this. I mean, <laughs> obviously it gives Brian Rast a lot of options. Best hand held every that's time. That's me. Rast would have won easily. Clear or so, so I'll get to play some. That, uh, well, get to play some poker. Not exactly true. Uh, it's been true twice versus you now, but I wouldn't say that's true of this Premier League in general. This most likely will go min raise uh, and then just all 48. in. Yeah, 48,000. Even though it's a lot, I think Scott will just shove for 800,000 here. Really? Into 35 well, Yeah, he's actually going to take the lower variance route. Yeah, I would prefer shoving that hand. It's just unexploitable, and I think you're going to do slightly better than you will just calling it. I did just whack Duhamel. <laughs> that as is a, as, a, as a dog, a oh, reasonable dog. Well, it's not going to end up being a Check. big pop, but yeah, it's going to be pretty sick. I guess a king comes it could. Rast tends to see about these boards. I think Scott will just call. So we will most likely get to see a turn. If it turns a king, then you'll have a big pot. Again, Are there a case for check raising if you're Scott? Is there one? Yeah, but the problem is, 46 is call. the majority of the hands that Scott call or is going to continue with on this board are going to be weak. He, it's going to be like uh, some queen high hands, some king high hands, some 7x, 3x. And in order to kind of protect those hands, the weaker Check. part of your hands, you need to play your really strong hands the same way. And the only hands that can stack off on this board are, let's say, ace three, ace seven. Maybe he check raises and stacks off like an ace eight type hand, but or an that's ace a bit thin. Yeah, and then not even an eight ten of diamonds. I think no he ace ten of diamonds. Yeah, that hand uh, could definitely be in there. Um, this is actually going to be a spot where Scott will bet and get called a lot, though. Seen some big hands in I'm actually side. thinking he may overbet here because he thinks that Rast would check back all the sevens on the flop. So there's a chance that you could see a very big bet here. 130,000. Okay, it just goes with the standard size. Both these players have made great river decisions, not just in this heat, in this match, but uh, throughout the Premier League. Is this, though, one of those that's where Rast has to just say, like, it's the math. Well, it's a tough spot because all of the flush draws miss. Scott definitely calls a 4-5, five, 5-6 five, as well pre-flop. And um, he wouldn't value bet a queen this big on the river. So he's really just has a 7 or maybe um, just an ace trying to blow him off a chop. And outside of that, he has uh, a number of missed draws. So a 3 is uh, it's, it's a pretty good bluff catcher in this spot. Yeah, and rest. I mean, rest. Yeah, exactly. Has a three. It's weird. You might you can play it off. Yeah, four, five, five, six missed, and diamonds. Um, that's not all that many hands, but there's definitely a number of hands that are bluffing here. I think it's pretty close. The, 
receiver hasn't been making very many bluffs in the river, but maybe he just hasn't been in those spots where you would be bluffing him. Is that kind of the thing? Yeah, I mean, he certainly would bluff. Uh, he knows that Brian would continue value betting all of his aces on the turn. So I think he would attack a check back because um, a lot of Brian's checks are, let's say, a queen eye hand that bet the flop and now turn the queen and is like, okay, I'm going to try to get the showdown with it. And then when the seven hits, like we said, Brian most likely would just check back the seven on the flop. Not always. He would bet it sometimes, but he could check it back. So it makes it uh, very rare that Brian has better than a pair of queens here. So uh, Scott would bluff at him for sure and try to get him to fold that. Also, if you're Brian, it's like at some point, I mean, you didn't see the straight flush, but Scott's made straight flush, full house, nut straights. Like, at some yeah. point, you just don't believe your opponent's making a hand every every time. And so, I mean, what is Rass doing? You, I mean, you can't get anything off Seaver. He just looks like a uh, mummy there. I mean, he's yeah. just, I mean, he just Call. got the old, he's called him. Full house. Yeah. It's just a tough spot. Um, it's just a really, really tough spot because Scott is going to bet all of his sevens and all of his aces that way on the river. So... You're just kind of flipping a point in your head and saying, what does he have more of, 7x, ace x, or misdraw? Yeah. yeah, and the pocket threes aren't even the guessing game there when you have yeah, a three. Yeah, it's just so rare. It's funny, they both adapted um, pretty pretty solid pre-flop strategies. And looks like both of them are kind of just playing small ball, not trying to get in big pre-flop wars. And yep. Yeah, I feel like if this was a cash game, they'd both get up from the table. Call. I, don't, I don't know if, I mean, I, yeah. obviously, you know, there is poker egos and everything, Check. but this looks like a pretty, a pretty uh, bare knuckled match to me. Yeah, it's kind of the clash of clash of the titans. Well, this could get interesting. Yeah, this is going to go check, check. check. Every, everyone's got a nice piece here. I'm actually 30, really 000. surprised he bet this hand. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. There's a lot of reasons to check back. Yeah, oh, no, 100%. He's oh. actually, no, he's checked back. No, he's checked. He's bet the flop rather than yeah. check back. It's and I think that... A lot of back doors, too. Yeah, I just don't think that... Um, wow, this this could be a big pot. Yeah, he's going to bet again for value now. Check, check. Oh, I like that. Wow. Okay, so he's finally decided to control fast. the pot. He's just owned you! S yeah. Rast! That could be dirty. Oh, wow, oh, that's going to be so dirty. That's the card in the deck. That said, Ras does float the flop with 910. He might check raise it sometimes. So, um, depending on his bet size, what did he bet? 50,000. Oh, it wow. Was, yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to get a value raise. He's getting a re-raise re yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's going to get a value raise. And it's funny, though, because... Uh, what are you, 230, 220, maybe even less. So How much did he bet? 50. He's, he's yeah, sort of it's going to be like 180,000, but Ras will not go all in. Right. This had the makings of an all-in at some point, but they played. So he's choosing 130, players. small size. 130. Oh, well. Queens oh. up. No oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are too good. They are too Almost good. Almost didn't raise. That just that, that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Yeah. In your in your world, Phil, they should take that and not allow it, it to be shown on oh, TV I because it to. shows people how much how how good everyone. is Really tried not yeah, to. The jig is up. The jig is up. Queens just felt too nitty. That's just been I just couldn't do it. I really want them to not. It's just like, oh, can't do it. Jesse, is, it, is this how it's been pretty much every season? Is the last heat usually f the fastest? Or is it not necessarily like that? I guess it depends. No, it, 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 it always depends. I mean, um, you know, certainly, I, I think that the last heat is, is usually the one where it takes the longest for the first player to get knocked oh. out. Let's say that. Because no, uh, the dynamic kind of yeah. just takes place. Oh, wow. This is going to go raise and call, I believe. 95,000. Yeah, I don't see Rast folding this 95. for three and a half bigs or whatever. No, that's a very rasty hand. Oh. Oh, no. So see. he may have limped here to so show. He's just going to do and, it. And that's reasonable, He's going right? to get snapped. Yeah, I mean, it's, pretty, it's a pretty hand. No. Call. Yeah, I think calling makes a lot more sense. I think Rast is playing very well here. Been really uh, impressed. Now he thinks he has the nuts. <laughs> Good luck, Rasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is good. gonna go bet and jam. <laughs> wow, check. he's receiver's gonna check shove. That's pretty sick too because he's gonna he's gonna ruin Rast's flush draw. Check. Wow, oh, Rast wow. says you're not ruining my flush draw. These guys, these guys might want a this little is more some than we pretty, thought. <laughs> this is some pretty cool stuff. And now it's it might just go bet shove, which is crazy. Might just what? be a call now because the the hand just got really weird. Whereas it would have just been a bet shove hand. Now it's gonna get tricky. It might just go bet and call. One hundred. 
Wow, Rast really outthunk him there, huh? Yeah, he uh, he said, hey, I have six high, but I don't want to get blown off my spades, and it'll be really sneaky if I turn a flush. That was it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that was kind of like the hand where you had, where me, you, and Phil were in that pot, right, of nut flush drawn. Uh, yeah. It's like similar reasons. This could be big. Yeah, he bricked it. Well, Seaver is going to, he might check call here, um, but I don't see him folding. I think check calls a really cool line. I like check call too because you get the all flush. draws yeah, you miss. Get all the <laughs> you get yeah, both flush right. draws. Queen X. There is a chance Rast just shoves. There's a lot of money in there. 390. He's probably got 500 yeah. behind. Or yeah, and Scott's just kind of said, "Hey, I usually don't have a straight here, so so Rast might just go for it." Too Snap. tall, Two Jones. Snap. He's going to get called so fast. He didn't, he didn't fall, did he? Oh, he's called. Yeah, he's not going to fall. Oh, so. oh, not, not low not for that price. Ras just like. Yeah, it's <laughs> honestly, <laughs> though, it's a win. It's a win for Ras that he checked back the flop. Uh, he's he's not like bluffing, but yeah. if I'm ever going to yeah, bluff I mean, that. River, I pretty much have to bluff with that one. Yeah. Good hand, Scott. <laughs> you forced me into it, he said. Yeah. Oh. Blinds now 30 and 60,000. And yeah, Scott Seaver saying, maybe it's me, you know, when you're tough as nails. Call. When you're tough as nails, <clears throat> you don't give up easy. Seaver bringing in the much Check. did he call it rarely used limp when your opponent has ten and a half Stay forever. Line. Let's Check. do this, baby. Sixty thousand. I kind of think you got to go all in here, right? Wow. You just know. Which for who? All in. Raise all, all in. Rest. Call and all there in. We call. Are. Fair Flip fight. It. Yep. Yeah, and for Rast, a chance, as you said, to actually take the chip lead Come back. on, short stack power. I think this got, one feels no, hard, no, no, They've got to end it. They've <laughs> got to end it. Some this one feels tough. Yeah, we this hit the last level, order. and they got to end it. This, this one's going to be a tough one. Seaver talking strong. Oh, oh my God. More <laughs> outs. <laughs> That's terrible. So I need to avoid paint other than a king. I just don't want to see paint. I mean, there's only two paint cards that I like. Yeah, spade, not the cross. Yeah. Good, ball. Good game, Rasty. Good game, Scott. Oh, Scott sick. Seaver yeah. took him. He didn't do it the easy Where way, Scott you? Seaver, Come but he did out. manage to avoid Jason Kuhn. He will take on Jonathan Duhamel in addition to being this heat champion. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Table, Thank you. The sixth heat is over, and we do have a winner. That is Scott Seaver. Our second place finisher is Brian Rast, and this means you go to the final table fourth in chips. So yeah. explain to me what that means to you in terms of uh, your chip stack. I believe it means I have 200,000, is that right, in chips? Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty short. I mean, I barely have more than the people that finish the heads up, but uh, I'm still direct to the final table. Don't need to s fade a heads up match, and hopefully I can make that work. And uh, you, the champion of this match, so that's good. You still have a shot now of being a double champion of the Premier League. How amazing would that be? Feels pretty great. Had two bagels this heat yeah. and still in it and just gonna keep trying to ride the magic. And you're going to be seeing uh, Jonathan Duhamel in the heads up match. So did you have a preference going in who you'd rather play heads up? Honestly, in a tournament where there's only 12 people, you don't get to have preferences. You just got to beat everyone. All right. Well, we're going to see what happens. Thank you guys both. The league stages are now complete, and it's Jeff Gross, Dan Coleman, Sorrell Mizzy, and Brian Rast who are automatically through to the final table. Jason Kuhn, knocked out of the top four by Rast, will face Daniel Jungleman Cates in a best of three heads up match. And Jonathan Duhamel and Scott Seaver also meet in the other heads up match. The winner of each clash will take a seat on the final table. And it's good night Montreal for Espandiari, Locke, defending champion Dan Shack, and Vanessa Selbst. Join us next time when the heads up gets underway. Jason Kuhn will be battling it out with Daniel Cates and Scott Seaver will go head to head with Jonathan Duhamel. Only two seats are left at the final table. So find out who goes through and who is sent packing as the Premier League continues here at the Playground Poker Club.